I want to apologize to all of you for having to sit through those first four presentations before you get to hear what you actually came for. <laughs> I've always known, go ahead, Steve, or I've always known that I was Scots-Irish. That doesn't mean half Scots, half Irish. Those are Scots who were sent over a period of 400 years to Northern Ireland as Protestants to counterbalance those pesky, unpatriotic Irish who were always troubling the British. And they didn't get along with each other. They still have problems in Northern Ireland where the Scots-Irish are. Over the years, um, lots of them, like the Irish Catholics, made their way to the United States. Many went to Appalachia, where they continued to not get along with each other. And uh, if you think of the Hatfields and the McCoys, that's, that's the nature of the problem. And from places like Appalachia and any place else they could get free land to farm, they wandered around the rest of the United States, like my father's father, who was born in Texas. I wondered, though, there are also a lot of distinguished Scots-Irish. There are at least 20 American presidents who have some Scots-Irish background. And I thought, even though I'm Scots-Irish, it'd be kind of fun, I don't do family tree stuff, to find out whether I'm related distantly to anybody you know, whose name I'd recognize. And so I looked on the internet, chose a DNA test company at random, and they sent me this kit where I swabbed you know, the inside of my cheek and put the swab in a glass tube and mailed it in and waited patiently for six or seven weeks for the results, even though I knew mostly what they were going to be. <laughs> You'll notice there's not many Scots-Irish in there. Here I was looking for a connection to some sort of a famous American leader type, and I had to completely switch my focus. <laughs> this, even for a guy who'd never really thought much about heritage and the, you know, where I was from and so forth, because the family, wherever it's from, has been in the United States for a very long time, this was requiring a kind of a culture shift. I'd never worn a kilt or played the bagpipes, but suddenly neither of those were at all relevant unless you like bagpipe music. So my wife said, you know, these companies make mistakes. If you go online, you'll find that all of them have complaints. So I chose another company, and this time they sent me, I didn't have to swab my cheek, I just spat into a tube until it was half full and then put that in the provided self-addressed box and mailed it in, and once again, waited for six or seven weeks. And even though I didn't have any pretensions about where I was from, I was hoping for something a little more definitive, something that would uh, have some connection what I'd, with what I'd always thought was my family background. I've never been the type, as I said, to research a family tree. My mother did it once. She was adopted when she was a year old, and she knew the names of her uh, birth grandparents. And she once scraped together $5 in 1950 when I, I was a toddler, and $5 was a lot of money. And she sent the $5 into what I would call a closed cover before striking family tree kit. They used to advertise on matchboxes. And, uh, she got a letter back saying, pretty interesting family background, here's a few names, we'd need another $5 to really dig in. So I sent that they, she sent in the $5 and found out that she was fourth cousin to the James gang, <laughs> Frank and Jesse. Now, today, people would be excited to hear about that. They'd brag about it and tell everybody in the bar. She was scandalized, tore up the letter, and didn't tell me until she was almost 90. We're all mutts in the United States. Some of us are 100% something from somewhere, but those of us whose families have been here for a long time tend to be pretty mixed. And I kept that in mind as I continued to wait for uh, these new results, which I thought might give me some faint connection.
Once again, you won't see any Scots-Irish here. <laughs> I was intrigued, first of all, it's mainly British. I was intrigued a little bit by the East Asian and Native American thing down at the bottom. But I had to give up Angela Merkel and start thinking about Theresa May. <laughs> As for that one-tenth of a percent, of East Asian and Native American, that's because during the last ice age, 13, 14,000 years ago, when there was a Bering land bridge, that's how the Asians came to the United States and, or to North America and eventually populated the whole Western Hemisphere. And I thought, maybe there's a famous Inuit leader there somewhere. <laughs> but the bottom line was I had two conflicting, contradictory reports. I had no idea where I fit into the field of faces. Another crowd of mixed people, some of whom you could look at and sort of guess ancestry, but like me, most of them don't know where they're from. I had been thinking after the first stage of maybe some advantages to a German background. Maybe there was some reason <laughs> I would want to be German. But in the end, I decided that both of these results showed that whatever the mix is, I'm just a mix. I'm just a mongrel, and like a lot of mongrels, I should learn to think outside of the ancestry box. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of ancestors or nature or nurture, but whichever it is, I am what I am. This is what I get. And thank you for listening. <laughs>